Hello, we are back and we are live again. We are sorry about the hookup. I mean, I'm just so glad that we are back in about 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes or so. So sorry about what happened again. Again, thank you so much for joining us for the live show for the Nell Show. As you know, the Nell Show is a nation building show where we have different topics and different discussions as it relates to our daily lives. So we try to bring out topics, whether that are spoken about or that are not necessarily spoken about, and we try to drill out the very foundational things so that we can bring out solutions that are relevant to our to ourselves personally and then we can be able to see how we can leverage on that and you know leave it out and work it out to our communities and to our nations at large today we have a very interesting topic the african system specifically in nigeria is a system where we don't really do a mortgage like the system abroad, like America, you know, and so on and so forth. We really thrive on you work for your salary, you work and you save and you earn to be able to buy a certain thing. But there comes a time where a person, no matter how hard a person works, the person may not be able to save up for what it is that they are you know they are they are looking to actually buy or the business they are looking to actually start up and that is why we are bringing up this borrowing topic the thing is for borrowing a lot of people are either afraid they are either afraid to go for it or they are either afraid to even lend out to a certain person or to certain people, maybe as a result of what that has happened in the previous times that they have tried to do something like that. And so that is why we're bringing in a financial expert, Tommy, to actually come and help us understand and navigate this boring terrain. Like I was saying in the write up, Tommy actually makes me <laughs> want to have more money. If you've listened to her before, you will see that she's such a very, she's a deep woman and not just deep. I've heard financial people speak, I've heard different financial people speak, and you know, some, she doesn't just come from the point of paper money, but at the same time, she discusses it in such a way that it is so relevant to how you can add value, how you can increase value, and that is what makes to me personally relatable to me. It's not just something that is off the air and something that you know, we're just trying to talk about, but we cannot really relate it or bring it back home. So we would be having Tommy join us. We had to go off. We had to go off the other time, but now I need to wait for Tommy to join in. I need to wait for Tommy to join in. The last time we had in our show, we were speaking about crafting and how to be able to make meaning and make it relevant for our continents, Nigeria and Africa. And it was so, so good. That session was really good. Tommy is here, so we're going to add Tommy now. Hello. Did you all smile? I just like, K -k -k -k. hello, Tommy. Even before you come, like, hello, Tommy. Good afternoon. I'm so happy. To have you here. Okay, I think you're having a bit of a network problem for your side, but hmm, we are going to continue that way. Ah, I don't think may, you may be hearing me, but I cannot hear you. We need to pray against this. Is not even going to happen. Hey, 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 today oh, that we have to do. 
Mogadishu Network. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Please, if you have a better suggestion for when Neo Show can hold, apart from Instagram Live, we are looking to that. We cannot continue having our guests, you know. I mean, go just go through stress. <laughs> Not at all. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to send a message to Tommy. Some more questions that we are going to be asking Tommy is why should you borrow? Who should you be borrowing from? When should you borrow? Is it even a sensible thing to do? What are the terms and conditions and conditions a borrower must meet to qualify to receive funds? And if you are a Christian, should people of faith borrow? So. Okay, I don't know if. Oh, okay. He's back. Welcome, Shirley. Tommy is back. Okay. Welcome, Shirley Spice. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, Josephine. Thank you for joining us. Hello. We're so glad that Tommy is back. Hi. Sorry. Okay. Today has just been funny. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Thank you so much, Tommy. I <laughs> thank God no for the network certification. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to read a bit of your profile before I start it. No, Tommy. Tommy Balogun is a certified financial education instructor and the leading expert on how to start, manage, and grow investment club. She created the investment club framework to help young working professionals take advantage of the power of money in Africa and build the process. Our company, Best Track, is a financial education and technology company. Me. Best Track works with young professionals and explores the use of technology to scale its operations. Okay, Tommy is the author of the book Investment Clubs How to Create Wealth Beyond Your Paycheck by Investing with Others. That book was featured on the number one new release in the crowdfunded category when it launched on, Am on Amazon in May 2018 in the bestseller track. Tommy is also the founder of Green Investment Club. 
Thank you so much, Tommy, for joining us on today's very amazing discussion. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So, Tommy, I'm going to start with one of you. And borrowing is something that we've had a lot of multimillionaires did to get to where they are. But it's something that in this day and age, some people are not quite sure about how to go about it. So they're not sure, is this right at a certain stage? Should I do it? Uh, when is the right time? Are people willing to give to me? So what is your own personal view on borrowing when it comes to finances? Okay, so it depends on why you're borrowing. Can you see me? Sorry, okay. I'm trying to move away from the yes. news. To move away from the news. Okay, thank so you so much. Borrowing, borrowing by itself, yeah, borrowing by itself is an activity, right? What you're trying to do is to increase the amount of money that you have in your hands, right? So I always like to define yes. something as this first. So that's what borrowing is. Okay. Now the question is why? So the question you ask yourself okay. is why? Why are you borrowing, right? So are you borrowing to buy something that you need? Or are you borrowing to buy something just because you feel that you want to own something? So if you're borrowing to buy something that is not like a luxury or a vanity item, um, then it's probably not okay. important. Are you borrowing to um, use it to um, invest in an asset? Are you borrowing for your business? Are you borrowing for... It, it all depends on the why. Now... When you ask yourself why you're borrowing, the next step is to look at the answer first and check out the reason why you're borrowing. So are you borrowing because you're broke? Then there's a problem there because <laughs> if you're borrowing because you're broke, that means you probably are not um, on top of your personal finances or maybe you're not earning enough money, right? So you need to always, sometimes borrowing is a symptom of the problem. So is the problem the fact that you, are, you don't have enough money? So that means you're not earning enough money. So what are you doing to increase the income that you're earning? Right? Are you trying to get more skills? Yes. Are you trying to, you know, provide value in the marketplace? What are you doing? Or it could also be that you spend too much, right? Check yourself. What are you spending yeah. on? Are you buying things that you do not need? Right? It could also be that you have responsibility, right? Maybe you give to family okay. or, or to something. So if you have like what they call black tax, um, and it's really high for you, the question is, is this something you can manage? Right? Are you giving to your parents? Are you giving to your siblings? If it's something you can't manage, then you really have to work to earn more income because that's a responsibility that you cannot um, decide to just drop. All right? So, first is why are you borrowing? Okay. So you're borrowing for your business as well. You need to ask yourself the right questions. Is your business ready? Is your business ready to mm. take on that amount of money? A lot of businesses are borrowing money just because they want to borrow money. Are you, have you thought about more creative ways to get money instead of borrowing? Right. And I'll get to why what borrowing is, but I wanted to start with the why, right? So if it's your business, why are you borrowing? Mm -hmm. Are you borrowing to buy an asset? Are you borrowing to pay salaries? Then there's a problem. Is your business, your, is it that your business has cash flow problems? If your business has cash flow problems, you need to dig deep. Why do I have cash flow problems? Is yeah. it that I am not, I'm leaving money on the table, right? So if you're leaving money on the table, then you need to think about how to make sure you're not leaving money on the table. Or is it that this business is not even successful and I need to decide to do something else? Right, so those are the things you need to ask yourself. Very important questions. Why am I borrowing? Is it for me? Is it because I'm not earning enough income or I'm spending too much? Is this my business? Is my business really ready to um, take on this amount of borrowing? Can, it, can I afford to borrow? What exactly am I borrowing for? When you have an answer to that question, right, you can decide if it's worth it because remember, borrowing comes at a cost. Right? So yeah. Can, so of course, if you're borrowing from yes. your friend, you can say, just give me this money, I'll give you back. She might not be charging you interest. But if you're borrowing from an institution, if you borrow from me, someone like me, I'll charge you interest. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> if you're my friend, so you'll pay interest because if you're borrowing, from, oh yes, because if you, were, if you were borrowing from an institution, you will pay. So I always you charge interest. Yes. I might charge lower, but there's an interest to pay because. It's costing me something to give you that money. I could have used it for something else and I'm giving you that money. It's just discipline, right? I'm not saying that I won't borrow you. I might if I decide to borrow interest. Because when I borrow money, I, I mean, I, I pay interest, right? So if I'm going to lend you money, then you're going to have to pay me interest on it. So if you now know why you're borrowing, right? And then it's a good hmm. reason why. The next thing is how are you going to ensure that you pay back as I lend you? Right. 
because your credibility, your integrity is at stake. Money is very money. I mean, we all know that money is a very important part of our lives, right? Money, we do money with everything. Yes. But how you handle money says a lot about you. If I want to know the kind of person you are, I just have to look at how you handle money, right? If you're someone that she, I would, if I look at it, I would know if you're an emotional person, if you're a calm person, or if you're someone that is, you know, thinking about their financial goals. It's always very clear because when you begin to set goals, when you begin to make some decisions, if nobody will tell you, you get more serious with your money. Unless if you're just someone that is more serious, right? Because you realize that, look, I can't do anything without money, right? I want to eat, I need money. I, need to, I, want to, I want to achieve my goals, I need money. I need to get an MBA, I need money. I need to buy certification, I need money. You really, money is a natural, yeah, sure. is, is a tool that you use to fully express yourself. Right? A lot of people always think that you know, there's something wrong if you want to be rich. There's nothing wrong if you want to be rich. It's actually, it's, it's okay to want to be rich, right? Being rich just, is just, it's, uh, it, it, I mean, it's something that we all want because we want to fully express who we are. Wealth helps you really yeah. express. Have you ever seen a poor man that is fully expressing who he, himself? No. It's either one who's living in a house he doesn't like or he's not driving the kind of car he wants. He's always having to worry about money because when you have money, you're free to do things the way you want to do it. It's not just, you know, because I know in this part of the world, we're so used to pictures on social media where, you know, having money is about, you know, having the biggest cars, having all the designer clothes. No, really. If you understand, I mean, it depends on you. There's nothing wrong with having those things if you can afford it. I don't have a problem. If you are borrowing to mm. buy it, then it's a problem. <laughs> of course. Mm. If you can afford it, I don't have a problem mm. with it, right? But then you need to understand that there's a reason why when you work for your money, you understand that there's, <laughs> you don't spend it on things that are not necessary, right? Mm. So you don't spend mm. it on things that are not necessary. So when you have a goal, right? For instance, if you have a goal to go do an MBA, there's a cost. Yes. Right? You're not going to so you yes. sit down and be wishing and be dreaming. You begin to plan and save. Mm-mm. That's that's exactly what it is. Money is a tool, right? So money is very important. Now the question is, at what point is it okay to borrow money? Mm. And yeah. I say this because I understand that. Look, um, I mean, if you go to the Western world, credit is mm. part of their economy. It's part of them. It's part of their economy. They just want you to be careful how you do it. In fact, it's a part of the system. You have to have a credit, um, credit, um, what do you call it? Um, credit points or credit reports or something. It's, it's, that's basically how their system works. You can't buy a house without credit. You can't do this. You mm-hmm. may want to pay off on time, but that's how you buy things. That's how you buy a car. That's how you buy no, a but... house. And really, it always helps an economy to grow. But you also have to be very careful because you always have to think mm-hmm. about how you can pay off your debt on time. Now, debt can enable you to buy some things, but as much as possible, I would say, look, don't take debt to pay off um, consumer items that will not pay you money back, right? Me, as a personal mm-hmm. person, what I do is, um, when I have cash, I would, um, yeah, credit score, credit score, thanks. When I have cash, credit I score. would um, invest it. The interest on that investment is what okay. I- Hello. Okay, I think, I think I'm went off. Yes, yes. now. Yeah, you you were yeah, saying sorry, when you I have cash. This internet in... connection is just horrible. <laughs> yeah, you stopped that. Uh, we what stopped that. Where you say you were saying when you have cash, you invest it. Then you are going to say some other things before your internet went off. Mm-hmm. I think it's in relation to why we should not borrow for consumer products. That's what you were trying to say. Yeah, I was saying that when I have when I have cash, I would invest it. Cash. Right. So for instance, okay. if I have a hundred thousand naira, I would invest it and the interest I earn from that hundred thousand naira is what I would spend. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you get that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. So are you done with the question? I just wanted to be sure that you are done with your points so that I don't 
Yes, 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 yes. I'm done. Let's okay. let's move on to the next question. Move on to the next question. Okay. Um, Tommy, I'm so glad that you were speaking about systems. You know, the Western world where they're like mortgage systems and all. Do you think, in your own opinion, that systems like that, uh, maybe en enable businesses to thrive better than in this part of the world where you have to work? work and work for your money to or say for like 10 years before you're able to get money to achieve a particular dream or start a business okay so let me be sure i got your question right you're saying that in the western world okay that, where there's a lot of credit yes does, does that credit, does that help yeah. does that yeah does that help business help yeah. yes that's your question right yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's that's one. That's that's yes. That's a really huge reason why um, those economies grow because small businesses or individuals have access to credit when they need it, right? And we all know that if you run a small business, especially if you run a capital-intensive business, you do need to probably take on credit at some point so that you can buy maybe additional assets to provide more value. That goes without saying. Mm -hmm. So yes, it does enable economic growth. It, econo it enables economic growth, right, in every way. And, you know, but even then, there still has to be um, some level of uh, control, so to speak. Because now, mm -hmm. let's talk about the pandemic, the ongoing pandemic now. The businesses that were really hit, right, were the ones that didn't really have um, a cash buffer. Right, mm -hmm. so they were basically living from month to month. So when they couldn't open for a month, when they couldn't open for a month, they had they couldn't pay salaries. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Things, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So when they couldn't open for just just a month, then the second month, then the third month, they couldn't pay salaries. They couldn't cope. Right. That shows you that sometimes credit <laughs> can, you know probably not help a business if you're not doing it the right way. You really have to think about building cash flow systems that work, right? So for me, during the pandemic, I was all right. Why? Because I have emergency funds. I have emergency funds for myself and for my business, right? So I could yes. afford, I could, afford I, I could continue paying salaries. I could continue paying salaries. There's some businesses that couldn't pay salaries. Right, because they are basically that's basically how the business model is. So sometimes it depends on the business you're running one, but sometimes if you're someone that is used to taking credit, right, it might also affect you if you run into a tough situation or something. So I think for businesses, you always have to find a balance, right? That's why you see you have people like Warren Buffett, they build up like cash reserves, you know, just something that you can fall back on. Now, it's not that you just keep the cash, but that cash should be in a security of some sort. So it should probably be in some sort of security like treasury bills or something so you can liquidate it if you need it. But, you know, when you're in a very tight situation, when all your money is, you know, tied into something and any little thing can, you know, just push you, push you into panic, you have to be very careful. For sure. Okay. Thank you so much, Tommy. You said a lot about how we should be sensible about borrowing, even though there's nothing wrong with that. I want to ask you this question about why you think people in the African context, or let me say some people in the African context are afraid of lending out their money. And what's your view on that? Someone like you know, you've already shared openly that, oh, you don't have a problem borrowing as long as it's going to be paid with an interest but some people are quite skeptical. And um, for some people, they find it difficult to go out to financial institutions because they feel like the interest rate is going to be ridiculous. So what do you think can be done about that fear? First of all, why do you think people are afraid to lend? And what do you think can be done about that fear of lending that we have you know, loitering around our system at this point in time? So yeah, so um, people are afraid to lend because they are scared that they might not get paid back. Really, that's it. <laughs> right? So, and that usually happens when you lend to your friends and family. That's usually what happens because you're like, oh, okay. So some people just say, you know what? I just decided in my mind that I'm giving you this money because it's so that when you don't pay me back or something, I don't have, you know, 
issues with you because when you're dealing with friends and family, there's also the sentimental aspect you have to be careful about. So sometimes, so on that basis, people are usually very um, hesitant to lend money, right? So, um, so, which is why for me, it's always like, first of all, do you know this person? There are some people that are naturally emotional with money, right? So you might lend somebody money, you know that person. You know your friends, you know your family. You lend this person money and the person doesn't pay you back. And the person just says, it's fine, Jerry, Tommy is my friend. I'll pay her back when I'm ready. And for some people, that's just wrong. Because when you came to me to ask for the money, I didn't say that I will give you when I'm ready. I gave it to you because you were in need. So for you to now decide that you will not pay me back, sometimes that hurts. So which is why for you, you have to learn how to manage yourself, your emotions, and say, you know what? I know this friend. If she asks me, I would only give her what I know that. If she doesn't pay me back, I'm fine with it, right? So, yeah, for me, I always, I actually have a budget for budget. black tax every month. Yeah, so I have a budget for it. Okay. I want to give to my friends or I want to give to my family. I have a budget for it. So once I give you, right, what I have budgeted for it, and if anybody else comes to me after that, I'm going to say that, look, I've, I'm already done with my budget for this, my budget for this month. I would give you next month. So, because I find that, I mean, this is not in all situations. I'm saying, I'm not saying that you should not be compassionate okay. or empathize with people. When you know someone that's going through a tough position, you know, and you will help. But then there are some people that are just not financially disciplined. So because you are not financially disciplined, you cannot put me in a difficult position because I have a plan and I have a budget. So if you not expect me to take out of something I had budgeted for something else to give you because you just decided not to be financially disciplined, then I have a problem with that. We all need to understand that we're all living our lives. I have a family, right? I have responsibilities. So we all need to be responsible and be disciplined in our money. Now, that said, if you do go into it, if a person is going through a tough situation, you know, because sometimes life happens, you can help, right? Nobody's saying that we should not be compassionate human beings. But I just want to take an advantage of you because you are nice. Then you need to make sure that you put something, you put it to stop because you also have your own life to live. Yeah. Me too. Thank you so much, Tommy. So what terms and condition must a borrower meet to qualify to receive funds from anybody, whether it's family or friends? Well, especially family or friends in the context of this, our interview. What are the terms and conditions a borrower must meet? <laughs> it, it, it's, I think the family of friends is very clear can the person pay you back so someone comes to meet you and says I need you to um, borrow me some money and um, sorry I need you to lend me some money the wrong words. and you know that person doesn't have a job the person is trying to get a job or something of course you know that look you don't know when that person will be able to pay you back but if, someone, if it's someone that has a job as a nine to five and they're just going through a tough time and they said, okay, please, can you lend me some money? You know that, okay, this person will pay you back. So um, in terms of terms and conditions, you just need to be clear. And sometimes it's different because people's personalities are different. I, I'm someone who's usually very straightforward. So with my friends, and I'm not saying that I've not had to also ask someone to give me money or um, lend me money I have. There was a time that, for instance, I made a wrong call in my business. So I had like cash flow issues because I was expecting cash, but I took the wrong step in something. So I was busy much cash trapped a bit. So I reached out and I said, you know what? I need you to lend me some money now so that I can meet some requirements. But then I said, I will pay you back at this interest rate. Right? Mm. Because mm. What, I, what I want for myself is what I will give to somebody else. So the person didn't even ask, but I said, you know what? I'm going to give you back at this interest rate. And then I paid back even before time, right? Pay back even before time, but I paid back with an interest because I did. I know that I inconvenienced that person, right? So, as much as possible, you know the kind of person. So that kind of person will have no issues if I decide that I want to. I want the person to lend me money some other day because I paid back even before time. And I paid back with interest, right? So you know the kind of people that you have around you. You know your friends and family. With institutions, they usually check out the um, history of your account. Now, for most of us, a lot of banks have been reaching out to people saying, "You can come and you know." borrow money you can come and borrow money at good interest rates now while that is good you have to be careful you know it comes down to why why are you borrowing the money is it buying something that is unnecessary because then you'll be paying back. i mean think about it you earn 
200,000 naira, for instance, as monthly income, and then you take a loan of 500,000 naira to do what? You don't even know. You just took the loan and you spent the money. You just live the baby girl life, you know, and you just spend the money. And then you are paying back that money every month. So let's say 500,000 naira over, five, over 10 months. You are paying back 50,000 naira every month. That has cut short your monthly yeah. income. So your monthly income is now what? 150,000 every month. And you don't even know what to spend 50,000 naira for. Right? Mm. So you, you, it boils down to your why. And the why is really broad. And a lot of people have different whys. So each person has to sit down and physically say, what's my why here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Tommy, I want to ask you, but I still want to ask you. So, I, you're saying you gave a personal example that borrowing shouldn't be a thing of shame because some people still find it shameful. Maybe they approach Tommy or somebody, the person will begin to look down on them. What is your view on borrowing versus esteem? Borrowing and a person's esteem and feeling just somewhat less of a person because the person needs money at a certain time. Um, there's no reason to feel bad if you know that it's something you need. No, okay, so like I said, it's a, it's a personal thing, right? If you have issues asking someone to um, borrow your money, then maybe you should try and make sure that you do not put yourself in that position. Right? So if you have self-esteem issues with asking someone to borrow your money, try and make sure that you do not find yourself in that position. Start saving. Start investing. All right? Save your money. Invest your money. Ensure that you always have a cash buffer, emergency funds, all of that. So that will help, really. So don't say that, oh, um, I have self-esteem issues. I don't want to borrow money. Blah, 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 blah. Make sure you're never in that point of income. Make sure that you're always investing. Make sure you're doing the right things, right? So, but if you do get into a situation where you do have to borrow the money, it's fine. Reach out to people that you know that understand you, someone you can trust and say, you know what? I'm going through a bad patch right now, right? And I need you to lend me some money and I will pay you back at a certain time with interest. Please, let's respect people, right? Let's respect people and not just assume that the person does not have anything to do with their money. Let's respect mm. people too. Yeah, we always have to respect people. Yeah. Thank you. So, Tommy, the other time you said you are going to touch on some of the reasons why you would you can advise a person to borrow. So, I just wanted you to please share on that. Why can a person borrow, especially in the context of business? In terms of scaling of a business, at what point should you borrow? At what point can you still pull through and maybe look for a way to get in external funds? For those that are in the dilemma of trying to borrow versus trying to wait, how long can waiting be and how fruitful can that be versus going to borrow and then seeing how it can be much more productive if you can pay back? question not too it's, long it's a no, no no but it's a very it's okay. not a question it's not a question i can answer in generic terms it's not a question i can answer mm. in generic terms i feel like it's a it's okay. a case by case basis right so i can't tell you that it's okay to borrow when you're doing just no 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 it has to be on a case by case basis i need to understand the context i need to know okay what's that person going through at that time you know so yeah i think it would be tough for me to give a generic answer to that question Okay. Yeah. Um. So thank you, Tommy. Tommy, what's your view on the interest rates on our financial institutions today? Some people have a problem with the interest rate. They think it is too high for the kind of small businesses that are being grown in today's economy. So what is your view on that? Or some people feel it is not supportive enough. Let me use that word. So what is your view on the financial interest rate from the financial institutions yeah <laughs> the um, interest rate by financial institutions the question of our economy really so our economy is in a state where you know you have to the cost of borrowing is high the cost of borrowing is high and that is because there are so many other factors like inflation rates the value of our currency so many other economic impacts. Right, so 
I mean, that's an economic question, really, on why banks charge high. Because banks work in an inflationary environment, for instance, and then they always have to ensure that also they are also making money while running their businesses, right? So the cost of borrowing is high because financial institutions are working with a Naira that is not a currency that is not very strong. And secondly, because one, you know, we have, we're in an inflationary environment, the regulatory context also doesn't help. I know that right now, banks are lending to individuals at lower rates, right? So when I say lower rates, I mean, they are making it more flexible. They're charging like 1.3% a month, right? Which really, it's not really low because in the US, you can get like 3% a year, right? Based on your credit score. But let's think about the environment that we're in. And let's also understand that these financial institutions are also running a business, right? So if Thank they you. really want to crash the rates, it has to be the federal institutions, the government. But even our government is in a tough situation right now because why? We are wholly dependent on crude oil. And now crude oil prices have crashed. So because crude oil prices have crashed, the government doesn't earn as much revenue as they should, as they should be earning, right? So even they are not in a position to help small businesses. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle. So, I mean, I don't want to go into too technical terms, but that's the best way I can explain it that the, the interest rate by the financial institutions offer to small businesses are not um, fantastic, really, but that's the kind of environment that we're in right now. And we just hope that. So that a fair treasury bill percentage rate in Nigeria. There's nothing like a fair treasury bill percentage rate in Nigeria. No. Treasury bill rates are determined by the government. So when you understand treasury bills, treasury bills are financial securities that the government creates to um, borrow money from the citizen. So when you're buying a treasury bill, when you're investing in a treasury bill, what you're doing is you're lending money to the government. Okay? So when you lend money to the government, the government pays you back with what? With interest. Right? So it's the government that determines the rates that they want to give it to you. If the government wants you to make it attractive to you, what will they do? They will increase the rates so that more people will do what? Will lend the government money. Think about it. So the government wants to borrow money from people and say, guys, come and lend me money. Guys. And the person will be like, why should I lend you money? What interest are you giving me? It's the same way. So if the government says, I will give you 20%, everybody will rush there, right? But if the government says, you know what? I didn't really need your money. I'm just giving you 5%. Those that want it will say, mm, Maybe I'll just manage this 5%. Some people are like, please, I don't need your 5%. I'm going somewhere else, right? So when the government really wants people to bring money, it's also a monetary policy um, tool. When they want to mop up money from the economy, that is the thing that is too much money in the economy. They increase the rates on treasury bills and they say, you know what, let's increase so that more people will come and lend us money. But when they don't really want you to lend them money, they drop down the rate. So it's a question of, so it's a question, you know, what the CBN decides is the fair treasury line rate. I just wanted to answer that question. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to even talk about it. Thank you. Um, Tommy, you discuss, we're rounding up. We're getting, because it's almost four. You call yourself the millennial investor. So I wanted to ask you that what was it that you saw that made yourself, that made you, you know, take interest in, you know, helping millennials invest and find the right investment opportunities? Mm. So it's, it's my story. It's my journey as well, right? So um, I was working in a financial institution. I was like every normal person right, in the like, 2000s when I started working. I think it was 2008, 2009. Yeah, that's when I started working. And I worked, I was excited. I got my first job, my first salary. But the thing is, as the salary was, <laughs> paid, I, was I was spending it, right? I was spending it. I was buying clothes, I was buying shoes. There was nobody <laughs> to tell me that. Life. <laughs> yeah, there was nobody to tell me that. You need to save, you need to invest. And I was even in the financial industry. I was working in consulting, you know, and I was still, I mean, we talk about the stock market, the stock market, talk about so many things. But you see, everybody taught me those things. Nobody taught me in school. Nobody taught me anywhere. But after, I think it was four plus years down the line, I decided that I wanted to go for my MBA, 
right? And then when you realize that, look, I'm not going to be earning a salary, you're like, oh my God, what have I, what have I been doing money all these years? I had no savings. Mm-hmm. I had no assets, nothing. You know, it just struck me like, and I was going for a two-year MBA. So for two years, you know, my life just literally played in front of me like, oh, wow, two years, I'm not going to be earning money. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? You know, so I knew that, look, things have to change, right? So thankfully, I had classmates during my MBA that also had the same um, interest that I had. So we started an investment club and we thought, you know, well, let's start saving money together. One, because I knew that as an individual, I wanted to hold myself accountable, Okay, because I knew that if I start saving, I could probably just get tired and stop. You know, if I see something, I'll just start. Yes, right. So that was one of my mm-hmm. major reasons for starting an investment club. I mean, you know yourself. Those of you that you know that it's hard for you to be disciplined by yourself. There are some people that are fine, but you know that. Look, I need someone that can tell me. Tell me why have you not saved this money? We decided that we're going to save this amount of money. So, I when I finished my MBA, mm-hmm. first job, first salary. I started saving. I started investing, right? So I, did, I wasn't just saving. I was actually investing. And that's how I started to learn about treasury bills, about bonds, about commercial papers, about the stock commercial market. Papers. And at that time, it wasn't even popular on social media like you have now. People were not talking about treasury bills on social media. I would literally walk into a bank and they would tell me, you are too young to invest in treasury bills. It's for older wow. people, right? Sometimes the customer service <laughs> person will not even... They don't even know what a treasury bill is at that time. I'm serious, right? So, you know, I started, and I realized that a lot of my friends too didn't know. But because I was actively trying to learn, I would go to the banks, I would go and look for experts, teach me about the stock market, how the stock market works. We would beg them to have meetings with us, me and my friends at the investment club. I started to learn. So I started to blog about it, and I realized that, wow, a lot of people actually don't know these things, right? Because we just left it for our parents or the rich people. You know, so I know you know what yeah. I'm a millennial and I am investing, right? So there's nothing wrong with being young and actually investing. So I decided to call myself the millennial investor, just so that people can connect to me. So that it's not that you have I have a lot of money. I don't have billions yet. I'm still working towards it. <laughs> <laughs> right? ah, but, so see, me, uh... but with the money that I have, I am actively saving and investing. So if I can do it, you can do it as well. I am learning how everything works, the stock market, the bond market, commercial papers, everything. I'm learning it. I'm doing it with my own money. So that's another thing. I don't teach what I don't do. If I'm going to teach you about mm. investing in real estate, I have done it. If I'm going to teach you how to help other people, I have done it. The stock market, I've done it. With my own money, I have put money in the stock market, I've lost the money, I've gained the money. I've done it. So I'm not someone that believes in theory because you also find a lot of people that teach theory. And the thing is that the people that, mm. actually, the people that are actually doing it in Nigeria, they are not sharing because, one, they're in their offices. They don't have books. I mean, if you go online, you find so many books online about investing in America. Where are the books about investing in Nigeria? Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, just, it's just knowledge that a lot of people wow. have in their heads. A lot of people have it in their heads. Wow. And they're they helping themselves and they're getting rich. But you see, the everyday people like you and I, we do everything. Like so for instance, when wow. the pandemic hit and the stock market prices dropped, you know, I, I reached out to my former boss. And he was like, told me, you need to get in on the stock market now. I was like, why, 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 what's going on? He was like, that's, it's like, this is the best time to buy great companies at a discount. I was like, whoa, I'm getting in. Thank God I had card, emergency funds and I had cash. A lot of people didn't even have cash to invest. You know, that's another thing. So mm. I was like, you know what, I'm getting in. And I, you know, and I started to invest in myself. I, I bought Nestle. If you know the Nestle stock price, Nestle stock price has always been like 1,500. Nestle was selling at 765. I bought it at 765. Wow. Today, Nestle is 1,200 naira per share. Wow. That's within a space of four oh, weeks. Wow. I bought GT Bank oh, at 17 naira. Today, GT Bank is 22 naira. And it's still going up. I bought Zenith Bank mm-hmm. afterwards. I bought, you know, so because I had someone to teach me these things, and I know, which is why for me, I have a community and I'm always teaching them, like, whatever I'm doing, I'm sharing yeah. them. So when I started to invest in the stock market, I showed you all of them. And those that could bought as well. So I'm not just keeping it to myself, Right. And they all started to invest and invest and invest. And all of us are enjoying the benefits now because the value of our stocks have gone up because we didn't just buy. And then that one other thing, we had the good advice. We didn't just go and buy a random stock that will be zero tomorrow. We bought quality stock because the prices dropped. And that was the best time to buy in the stock market. Same thing with real estate, right? Same thing with Eurobond. Same thing. I mean, I wrote an article 
about how I'm investing as a millennial in this pandemic. I'm actually taking advantage of a lot of opportunities in this pandemic. Why? Because I have the knowledge, I have the right people, and I also have a cash to do that. A lot of people are not prepared to do that, right? So a recession is a great time to take advantage of opportunities. And all indicators indicate that we're heading into a recession now. There's nothing to be afraid of. A recession is simply an economic phenomenon. I always say that you have to understand things. Don't just hear things in the news or in papers and then you're afraid. You know, you have oh, to be... Understand in... things. You know. Sorry, a great man. Same for me. Oh, okay. So I was just trying to read the comments. You know, so I was saying... To that, read... Um, oh, okay. I didn't... Uh, mm. Yeah. A recession is not something to be feared. It's something to be understood, right? Because a recession is simply a decline in economic growth. It's not, it's not the end of your life, <laughs> right? So sometimes when people just see this thing, they'll be like, they'll be afraid. Oh my God, recession. No, it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to be understood, right? Always come from a place of <sighs> seeking to understand, not a place of worry and doubt. When you seek to understand things, you learn. And when you learn, you become much stronger and you become a much better person. Right, so always come from a place of how can I understand this and reach out understand. to people that know. Reach out to people that know. Mm. So, like I said, I have a lot of mentors and you know people that I would just reach out to, experts that I would just reach out to. I've built relationship with them over the years, so it's not like I'll just call them and say, "Please, what do I do?" No, they know that to me adds value to them and they add value to me. Right, so those are that's how to always. So that's been my story as a millennial, really. So for me, Actually, calling myself a millennial, millennial. is like. Yes, through as a student, as a nine to five person, and now as an entrepreneur, I've gone through every phase and I am investing through every phase, right? And I'm learning my lessons through every phase as well. If I can do it as a son who worked nine to five, because when I finished my MBA, I, I got on a leadership program and I started to work and I was investing as I was working with my salary. And now that I'm even as, I'm as, as, as an entrepreneur who's running our own business, I am also actively investing. So if I can do it as a nine to five person who has a job, if I can do it as an entrepreneur, if I can do it as a single girl, if I can do it as a married woman, if I can do it as a wife, married you can woman. do it. I've literally worked in all your shoes. Yes, mom. Right. So yeah, that's my story. Um, thank you, Tommy. I wanted to ask about Green Investment Club, but before then, I want to ask you, you, you made a very important point about investing in places like GTB, Nestle. So I wanted to ask you just for the financial basics for those that don't know. You're investing there like at 700 Naira Plus, at 17 Naira. What does it help you do? Does it mean you're now, a, you're now part of the company owners? Or can you just tell us a bit about that, what those investments do? Especially the one in GTB and Nestle that you were giving us an example of. So, yeah, we have to round up now. Sorry. It's, so, you know, yes, I just had, you know, I just had a baby. Yeah. So, um, oh, yes, yes. no problem, but I'll just answer that question. Um, when you buy yeah. shares in the company, you become a shareholder, right? That's what happens. Um, so, um, a company has shares. So, even if you register a company, you say the company has about 1 million shares, 10 million shares. So, the stock market basically enables you to buy shares in a company. And when you buy shares in a company, you become a shareholder. So, you know, it's different from when you lend money to a company or a government. When you lend money, mm. you are just, you know, the person will pay you back, right? But when you buy shares, yes. You, have yes. On, you have ownership interest in that company. So you are really a part owner in that company. And the company is publicly company. traded. Right, so when you buy a piece of that company, you are also going to enjoy the benefits that comes with that company. When that company makes profits, they will pay you dividend, right? And if that company is doing really well, the value of the stock will go up, right? That's what happens. So mm. the value of the stock, like the GT Bank, will go up. Why? Because they made profits, they are doing really well. So people will begin to demand for that stock, and then that will push the value of the stock up. Right. So, but then sometimes technicalities happen, um, economic cycles happen, like the pandemic hit and the value of that stock dropped. Now, when the value of the stock dropped, right, it's not because the stock company is not good anymore, but it gives you an opportunity as an investor to buy a share in a good company at a discount. 
right? Mm. So GDP, when before the pandemic, GDP was trading at what? 28 naira, 30 naira per share. So when the value of the stock market, the entire stock market, not just GDP, dropped, the value of the dropped. stock dropped as well. So but the thing is, now you can buy a good company at a discount. So when it dropped to 17 naira, I rushed to buy it. Why? Because... It's a good company, and I'm getting that a good. It's price. a good company. If I'd bought it at twenty eight, if I'd bought okay. it at twenty eight naira, it's still good. It's still good because it's a good company. But it's even better buying things at a discount. That is the opportunity a recession gives you. Right. Mm. That's the opportunity yeah. a recession gives you. A recession, a recession gives you the opportunity to take advantage of opportunities that nobody else is taking advantage of. But you have to have cash. All right. Yeah. So that's that's how I explain it. Mm. Thank you so much, Tommy. Tommy, this is the final. It's a rapid fire question session and it's a fun session. So we've closed out question for today because you have to go. Uh, what's your favorite color? Yeah. Uh, favorite color would be <laughs> blue, I guess. I hit you. Uh, Hello? I said blue, 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 blue. My food? Uh, my favorite food? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you come again? My favorite color is blue. Yes, and your you favorite food. Yes, I um, heard that. I heard I'd that. Say, yes, is your favorite food that I didn't get? My favorite food would be um, yam and eggs. Okay, what are you allergic to? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, what's the best movie? Uh, best movie, Sound of Music. Okay, best book. You've read Investment Clubs by Tommy Baruch, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Were you born in Nigeria? Were you born in Nigeria? Yes, yes, I was. I was born in Nigeria. Okay. If you weren't born in Nigeria, what other country would you have liked to be born into? Mm, I would have liked to be British. Okay. Gold or silver? Gold. Black or white? Black. Oh, so many session. Oh, by concluding now. Yeah, I said black or white. Black. Yellow or pink? Yellow. <laughs> what is one favorite thing about your husband? He loves me. They <laughs> <laughs> told me look so <laughs> like tell me your facial expressions are so <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, did you say something? Have you said anything yet? About my because husband. Because I think you went off from my side. Yes, yeah, so one favorite thing about your husband. Um, I said his height. His height, okay. What is your favorite attire to wear? A dress, a pretty dress. Yeah. Okay. okay. What is your favorite thing to do? Read. I love reading. Okay. What do you like to do for fun? Watch a movie. Okay. Small chops or jello fries? Jello fries, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Fruits or vegetables? Fruits or vegetables? <laughs> Fruits. 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 Okay. The bus or an airplane? Would you rather take the bus or an airplane? An airplane, because I'm very impatient. Very... Ah. <laughs> okay, writing or speaking? 
writing. I love writing. Rain or sunshine? Rain. I love the rain. Rain. General training or should I say group or one on one? One on one. Okay. Audio or visual? What? What? Audio or visual? Did you say audio or visual? Yes, yes. Um, it depends, but I mostly usually go with audio. Actually. Audio. Okay. Yeah, audio. All right, a day at the beach or a day in one of your favorite restaurants? Beach, a day at the beach. Yeah, at the beach, okay. And then... You would remember for that. What the story you want to remember for? Oh, that I... What I want to be remembered for? Is that a question? Yes. What do you want to be remembered for? Um, I want to be remembered for my heart, really. For how much I contributed to my heart. Yeah, talk. Did you hear me? I'm sorry, Tommy, can you come again? I'm not sure we had no, no, because of the network. Oh, I said I want to be remembered. I, I want to be remembered for my contribution to the world, to helping people gain financial intelligence and create wealth. Okay, thank you so much, Tommy. I know that you have to go now, but I wanted thank you to you. tell us just generally about the Green Investment Club or where can we read up on it if you don't have the time to talk about it right now? Can we just go to just go to w just go to w so people get to the com. Yeah. yeah i was saying just go to www.thegreeninvestmentclub.com or at the green investment club on instagram all right so you find all the information okay there. okay then anybody can find all the information there. All right. Thank you so much, Tony, for joining us today. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining the Nell show today. If this has been of so much value to you, please refer somebody to actually watch the replay and share the video with someone that you believe that this can help because i believe i've spoken about a lot of important things today even though this was something oh somebody is asking for okay so yeah thank you this is tommy's the green investment club.com i think when we go to the green investment club.com we'll see every other thing that has to do with you know contacting how we can how you can get to contact and so on and so forth. So thanks so much for this video to somebody if you if it has been of value to you. If you have other questions you can ask. <laughs>